Welcome in to SportsSource.tv. This is our overtime segment brought to you by my friends at Jinx Logo 755-7767. That's an 865 area code. Uh, they do a great job in terms of promotional items, clothing, uh, giveaway items, whatever your company needs, whatever your sales force needs. Uh, they master it and the thing is their prices, you know, most places you're going to go and the item is going to be more expensive than what they do with the item and your logo already put on the item. It's incredible. There aren't any companies that I've ever dealt with that have as quality merchandise and as good prices as Jinx Logos. Give Jimmy Andrews a call. You call that number, you'll get in touch with him. All right. I want to talk about Dave Hart, or Bama Dave, as some folks call him. <laughs> the SI.com story on the Lee Vols fired up people again this week. I got a couple of emails uh, just ranting about this guy. We got to get rid of Bama Dave and everything. Uh, part of that, I think, is no athletic director is popular. Think about it. The AD is the guy who always asks for more money. Your, your seats are going up. You know, he's also the guy. That every time a coach loses, well, you're the guy that hired that coach. So no athletic directors are popular. But when it comes to Dave Hart, you said it in our show today. There have been some highs and some lows. He's had some hits and some misses. But I think the hits outweigh the misses personally. Your thoughts on Dave Hart and the job he's done so far, considering what he's inherited, and uh, we know Houston's going to go homer today. <laughs> So Chuck, I'm going to make you be Mr. Negative. <laughs> now, what are, you, what are your thoughts on Dave Hart? I mean, there's some pluses and some minuses, but what is the big problem? Is it the fact he's not a UT guy? I think that's a big problem with a lot of people. It's, it's the same problem that a lot of people had when Doug Dickey was rehired as athletic director because he left the football program to go to Florida. Traitor. But he did a really good job as a football coach. He did a very good job as athletic director. Dave Hart inherited two very difficult situations, in my opinion. One was he had to get the football program restored. Yep. And, and he is on the way to doing that with the higher Butch Jones. The second one was merging the men's and women's athletic departments. And to be frank with you, I don't think there was an athletic director over there that basically had the guts to go full-fledged and merge them. You had piecemeal here, some here, some. Mm -hmm. Whoever did it was going to anger people. Yes. And Dave Hart has angered people. Yeah, I mean, it's just the, the nature of the beast. It's a very tough situation. A lot of people wouldn't have wanted to take that on. Because, I mean, you look at how the Lady Vols were built from scratch here. I mean, from the ground level up. And I was familiar with some of that. When, you know, you had Joan Cronin coming along, Pat mm -hmm. Summit. You had several programs. But they were able to stay separate. Right or wrong, longer than just about anywhere else in the yeah. country. Tennessee and Texas were basically the last two. And, and mm -hmm. the other thing that, that shocked me was Dave Hart, when he left Alabama, what did they have in reserve there in case they had something happen? I mean, 70, 80 million? Over 80 million. Over 80 million. And Tennessee had what? It was under five, wasn't it? Yeah. It's 1.9 million. Was Under, like two million. <laughs> I mean, that just shows you that it was dire straits, whether or not people want to admit that or not. Let me put up something here quickly, and we'll get back into this. Uh, I've got a graphic here. In terms of the Bama Dave thing, the guys in yellow are the athletic directors in the SEC who actually went to that school. You talk about an overblown bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Everybody wants, oh, you got to have a guy from the hometown. you got to have a grad. Well, 10 teams in the SEC don't have grads. Jeremy Foley's been pretty good at Florida. Mitch Barnhart, been okay at Kentucky. Joe Oliva seems to be doing okay at LSU. You go down the list, you know, you got Scott Strickland, Greg McGarity, Jay Jacobs, Bill Battle. That's it for graduates who are ADs at those schools right now. Now, Mike, Ald Mike Alden's retiring. Who knows who they're going to bring in there at Missouri. Arkansas is going to make a change. Who knows who they're going to bring in. But for the most part, this idea, I've, I've always wondered about this, and I finally had the had five minutes to look it up as the snow was pounding down this week. <laughs> Jimmy, you picked the right week to be in Arizona. Um, you come back to us. When, uh, when you look at that, though, I always wanted to know, okay, how, how rare is it to not have one of your guys? It's not rare at all. Most schools don't have one of their guys. So anyway, let's just kill that argument. Uh, hope I'm sure that'll do it. <laughs> Didn't even get one <laughs> nail in any coffin. Yeah. So uh, guys, back to the heart situation. Let me throw out some things, and you tell me if it was plus or minus, all right? Hiring a Butch Jones, obviously a plus. Mm -hmm. uh, building up the reserve fund so far. That's a plus. That's I think. a plus. Sure. Uh, the way he merged the programs. I happen to agree with you that there's no way that you could have merged them and not left people angry mm -hmm. because people are losing jobs, et cetera. Does anybody disagree? Do you think that the merger of the two programs could have been handled with more PR success? No, I don't. I don't. I'm sorry, I, mean, I don't have an explanation for that, but I just think he's done it. It's not going to be an easy way to do it. Just like you said, it's not a... There's not no easy fix. 
Well, you know, and, and I know the Lady Vols basketball is your big Lady Vol brand. Right. But to me, if you're gonna if you're gonna just get rid of them, get rid of all of them, and just make it Tennessee Vols, not just have this one program out here. It's either all in or or don't do it yeah, at all. Yeah. See, I think they knew they couldn't do that with Lady Vols basketball. I mean, not not for a not for a few years anyway. And Georgia has a separate. They've kept their women's basketball separate, but that, that's rare. Most schools are. Mm -hmm taking it in one direction. Um, I think that, um, again, I, you could have allowed them both to have, you could have allowed all those sports to keep their same name, but just made them go to the power tee and go to one color scheme, one font and everything else. And you yeah. just have Vols and Lady Vols. The Lady Vol fans would still be mad that they lose their logo in the light blue, but you'd at least get Lady Vols on everything. You'd mm -hmm. at least have that name. But all right, um, how he handled the Pat Summit situation. We talked about another difficult situation that he had to walk in and inherit the situation with her health decline and having to make a change there. PR nightmare, whether it was deserved or not, because she might have misunderstood what he was saying to her. Tyler, her son, came out and kind of defended the situation. But that's one, plus or minus. I, I'm going to go plus on that one. And I know that there are a lot of people that don't agree with me on this one. But you, you said something there that is the reason I'm going with it, because Tyler Summit was OK with it. I do think that there were some times when Pat Summit might not have understood things and correctly. For that very reason, I think I would give it a minus just because there wasn't somebody else in the room. Or it was just when basically, they met. yeah, when, when, when they met. I mean, and you know that there's going to be a chance for some misunderstandings, and you know you want this to be very clear. And Pat, here's what we have, here's what we're saying. You want it spelled out exactly, and you want somebody else in the room that can verify that or maybe even help explain it later. I'm, a, I'm the understanding that Tyler was there. I thought Tyler was involved with everything, every meeting, every decision that was made. I don't think he was. He wasn't involved involved in that. And in fact, I think he even offered to be there or something and, and, and didn't go. Yeah. But I don't know that, I mean, in hindsight, you're probably right, but I don't think when they met, they felt like, Pat, there would be any misunderstanding. Even Dave Hart had talked to Tyler Summit and had talked to, to Pat a little bit about, this is what we're gonna do. And so there was no anticipation of any misunderstanding is the way I... I think that one it. looked worse than it was. I think that I, another, I that's another situation. Good luck handling that yes. where everyone's going right. to be happy. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's not going to look good. No, but I'll throw out a couple of minuses. You tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think he found a good basketball coach in Donnie Tindall. I think it was a poor vetting job because I, you're sitting under another NCAA cloud. I think all you had to do was pick up a paper which is what we did. I went and tracked down the paper from Moorhead State, whatever the town is that is in Owensboro, wherever in Kentucky. I think it's Moorhead. I'll yeah, get Moore, the Moorhead. Is that where is it Moorhead? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, so I got the Moorhead Daily Paper, whatever they call it, the Daily Daily, Daily. And uh, I found it. I, I, that to me is a minus. That Well, he knew that. Well, I know he, he knew it. Anyway. And that's, that's the problem. That, that's the thing. He hired yeah. him anyway. That's the argument. Well, uh, how much did he know it? I mean, he says he vetted well, it. knew it, didn't he? Well, I remember when we came out here and showed it the next week that off the air, we said, that's rough. That we read the NCAA thing. We said, well, that's yeah. more than it sounded like. So maybe Hart went and read the NCAA report. Maybe he just talked to Tyndall, and Tyndall said, it was a rogue booster. I didn't know. And he didn't realize the NCAA report had Tyndall and the rogue booster talking about on the phone several mm -hmm. hundred times. Um, to me, that's a negative. You, you guys disagree? I, I would see the negative more as not that he didn't vet that, that he hired somebody who had that mark against them when you had Bruce Pearl yep. right before. That would be yes. my concern. Yeah, okay. and, I, and I don't know, if, and I would agree, but I think the even bigger minus was the way he handled the whole Conzo Martin thing, the way the okay. petition came out, and you just didn't nip yep. that in the bud right then and there. To me, that yeah. would be, yeah. if I had to rank yeah. the biggest <sighs> negatives, I think that goes number one. And that's another, I mean, that didn't, nobody's ever seen that. Now, Michigan students followed Tennessee's lead and did a petition to get their AD fired this year. But until that, that's another one where he walked into a totally unique situation. How do you handle a, a petition to bring back a guy that's not here anymore when I got a coach already on staff? Mark, your thoughts on did they handle that right or wrong, the petition deal? Uh, I don't think he handled it right because he didn't come out and say anything. But to me, him not saying anything just proved that much of a point of just he was not on the Conzo bandwagon. And he didn't want to come out and say, this is our coach. Uh, and then in, in fear of them losing and not getting into the NCAA tournament or even losing in that play-in game because then he was going to get rid of them anyway. I'll give you another one, and I don't know how much he cares about it. I think you hit on that earlier. Somebody hit on that earlier. 
Uh, PR wise, I, I think he, he tripped up a little bit in this Lady Vols handling. You can't make everybody happy at the merger, you know that. Uh, but here's where I thought it was bad. You go through the name change and everything. Then you decide you're going to merge into one sports hall of fame over there. Okay, I understand that too. You're one, one Tennessee is the idea. So one hall of fame. Uh, that's being viewed as a negative towards women when actually it would, you would think it would be let's pile everybody together, it would be a positive. But here's the problem. After that came out and people are saying, what are you doing? He must just hate women's athletics. This year when they announced like the women athletes of the year, they usually announce the female athletes of the year and all that stuff during one of the timeouts at a football game. You know, it's, they do a thousand right. rows every year. They didn't do it this year. To me, that shows that either A, you were completely tone deaf. Because if I'm having to make these changes, I'm going to go overboard to show everybody, hey, I don't hate women's athletics. So it tells me either A, he doesn't care what people think and isn't very good at PR, or B, he really doesn't like it at women's athletics. I don't think that's the case, but the way he's handled some of this stuff, I see why Lady Vol fans view it that way. I just don't think he's he handled some of the Lady Vol issue. You're not going to make everybody happy. But I don't even know if he attempted to make everyone happy in some of these PR moves. I don't think there were PR moves. One you didn't touch on is uh, doing away with the salute to excellence. And that was a fundraiser for the Lady Vols. Now, the numbers that I had been told initially are quite different from the numbers I got. In other words, I was told they were raising 400000 a year with this event. And then when I got the numbers, the last two years they had raised less than $100,000, uh, which, which is still not bad. But, but they, they were looking at doing something different in terms of trying to put this together, but that was something else that got some folks Th That's out. why I'm going to start the salute to excellence of the sports source. <laughs> you can donate to us anytime. And here's my deal with it. I think Dave is seeing where this NCAA is going. In five years, it is going to be men's, it's going to be football, men's basketball, women's basketball, and maybe baseball. Mm -hmm. That's what the NCAA is going to be. And so he, it's just funneling everything, all your resources, to that and because the way escalating prices of, of college uh, education is I mean it's just a changing dynamic to where you're not gonna the other sports I love them my daughter plays them I go cheer for the Lady Vols in those sports and even the men's side but they're not revenue generating right. and and five to ten years from now at the university level those other sports are going to become more like intramurals they just are and so he's making decisions in, in to get out ahead of that because that's the way well it's going. i tell you what if that's going to happen somebody's going to have to erase title nine <laughs> well, and you know i mean and they, they, you you may be right it may be that super conference type approach but while you're looking at the future you better keep an eye on the here and now and what's going on with your student athletes right now because that probably will happen but if it doesn't, you're missing the boat right now on a lot of things. Okay, final word, Jimmy and Houston, on the job Dave Hart has done. Uh, I, I understand why some people have issues. They can have mm -hmm. issues with everybody. I mean, everybody's got people who don't like them. That's part of it, especially when you're in his job. But on the whole, I see more pluses than minuses. Oh, yes. I agree with that. And I, and I think it's not fair to say Dave doesn't care or Dave doesn't listen. I think he does. I think he cares. But I think at the end of the day, somebody's got to make those decisions. Same thing about the president of our United States right now. You know, now he, people say he doesn't care, doesn't listen. He's making decisions he thinks are best for this athletic department right now, and it's business decisions. Mm. You said business. One thing I admitted early was he inherited a, a financial situation right. as a mess. We've touched on that a little yeah. bit. But I think overall he's done a good job. The thing that I think he probably could do a better job of is making himself more available to explain the decisions that he makes. Well, I he's think not out there as much as I think he could be. And I think that gets back to a little bit of the PR thing. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have said he doesn't care, but it looks that way when you just make your decision and sit in your tower. Right. It's like, sure. Eh, this is what it is. <laughs> Deal with it. Uh, so I, I think Jimmy's right. Maybe a little bit more of explaining would work. All right. That. Thanks to Houston, Jimmy, Chuck, and Mark down there. We'll see you next Sunday at 11 a.m. on WATE6 for the Sports Source. Thanks for watching. <laughs>